talking about club nights and talking about all all good stuff that involves going out i've been meditating a lot or thinking a lot about the whole hackney council licensing stuff right that's been going that's been kind of uh grabbed everyone's attention on social media especially if you follow people that tend to go out or people that are behind some of the best clubs in the land and as i mentioned on twitter the other day i've kind of changed my mind with the whole idea i was very much against it i was very much uh rah 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 uh burn down hackney council and how dare they and um no one wants this blah 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 but having looked at the evidence having really read some of the pieces of information that pertain to it i've kind of changed my mind on it hold on let me see if i can, can I zoom in oh, i can't zoom in oh annoying anyway i sort of changed my mind a little, a little bit and uh, most of it has to do with i don't know it's 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 a complicated affair right it's a complicated affair it's a complicated affair that no one really knows how to address but i thought the interesting thing behind it that really makes that really kind of like um shows the kind of divide in opinions or divide on direction the way london should go comes from the 24-hour tube right the 24-hour tube was sadiq khan's like um it's like you know when rudy giuliani cleaned up the streets of new of new york like by taking away all the drugs and all the seediness and all the prostitution and shit so he can't kind of use the 24-hour tube thing as his sort of like legacy right of that he's going to leave behind as being london mayor and you know like tourism in london hasn't been higher is at its highest now uh, people are coming in from all different parts of the world. You're even seeing with the resurgence of places like Shoreditch and Old Street that are inviting tourists in as well. People are not just going to Leicester Square and Piccadilly Circus to come visit London. They're venturing out to other parts of East London. London hasn't, it has, it, there's never been a better time to come visit London than there is now, right? And a 24 hour tube is just another extension of kind of like allowing London to kind of um, resemble some of our European counterparts and also allow people access to some of the best spots around London and also safe transport back home cool but then there seems to be a real divide between Sadiq Khan's idea of what London should be like and the actual residents uh, of these council of these boroughs who, who actually live there right their day in day out struggles because the 24-hour tube represents where London should be going but then the Hackney Council licensing law um, that kind of got introduced recently, the curfew on uh, bars and clubs to close. Is it 11? No, is it 11 on weekdays and 12 on weekends? That kind of represents like what the actual residents of those boroughs want it to be, right? There's, and, but there seems to be no middle ground at the moment, which is a little bit concerning. And I guess if you're someone that's a fan of the 24-hour tube and you want to go out in Hackney, having a 24-hour tube and only being able to party up until 12 doesn't really make any sense. And then what, um, da, 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 and what else I've read here? And then on the other side of it as well, because I remember I, re I read this stat on this article that mentions that um, £66 billion pounds is generated by uh, the nighttime economy, right? London generates, that's what annually, right? And it accounts for 6% of uh, the UK's GDP, right? Gross domestic product. That's like the marker to judge um, how s um, great the economy, how successful a particular city or nation is doing. So 66 billion is generated from the nighttime economy per year. But then I guess if you're living in these boroughs, your counter argument would be that the nighttime economy doesn't have to extend beyond 11 p.m. anyway. It should just stay, uh, it, 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 should, it, can, it can live within the hours of uh, 5 to 11 p.m. And I remember someone from the council committee mentioning something about like, it's not always about clubs, isn't it? Like, I think because the Save, oh, was that Love, Love Hackney? initiative or those that kind of group that's kind of protesting this whole legislation they're very much in bed with you know the nightclub and bar owners who only represent a fraction of you know what it means to kind of live in these boroughs day in day out which i kind of understand um and then but then the only thing that kind of threw me off a little bit was i watched this video about what amsterdam how amsterdam has kind of approached the whole nighttime economy thing right um and the government sort of realized or understood that, you know, as as probably annoying as reputation of, you know, Amsterdam being a seedy place with the red light district and the marijuana and the drug use and shit. As, as, as bad as that may be, there is, it's probably doing more good than bad for the overall GDP and the overall uh, um, well-being and job security and all that malarkey for people that live in Amsterdam in general. Right. So they kind of um allowed themselves 
they kind of put down their own they kind of put aside their own sort of um prejudices right their own points of view and appointed a nighttime mayor who was responsible for bringing in this initiative that kind of allowed 10 venues in Amsterdam to have a 24-hour license, right? So they chose 10 of the best venues and gave them a 24-hour license. And I'm pretty sure that 24-hour uh, license came with the responsibility to ensure that their patrons inside and outside the bar are safe and well-behaved, right? So it kind of puts the owners back on the clubs to kind of take ownership, right, of um, how, how they treat their customers, right, and how they treat the space around them. Um, and it kind of reminds me of the image of the Japanese fans and Senegalese fans during the World Cup cleaning up their stands after the World Cup finished, right? So, like, um, picking up cups and shit, you know what I mean? Like, to help out the staff members that are working in the stadium, but just in general, just to kind of, you know, be good um, citizens for their nation or good representatives for their nation. And I think Amsterdam choosing those 10 clubs has kind of done the same sort of thing too, right? Because if you're on those 10 clubs, the last thing you want to do is lose your license. <coughs> due to you kind of not being proactive and not taking care of your uh, punters. And then outside of that, you have um, this initiative, which I also like, um, in the main city square, they've got these things called host, where they all wear red, they all wear red jackets, right? And they kind of act as in like the intermediaries uh, between the police and the kind of, I don't know, the police and the club owners, let's say, outside of the venues. And they're kind of similar to what we have here in London. We have these guys and girls called pastors that kind of wear these fake police uniforms sort of thing um we have other people could patrol people i see sometimes mostly in dawson and shoreditch i see them wandering around places but they you know they kind of look a little bit too security laden you know i think they've got stab proof or bulletproof vests on and shit but these uh the, the host in um in amsterdam just wear kind of coach jackets and shit which probably isn't safe maybe they've got a vest on underneath to kind of you know but they, from the, from the looks of it, they sort of look a little bit harmless. And But the idea behind it is that they're the ones that are kind of meant to warn you when you're getting a bit too leery. And I, I'd assume because, you know, ma mainly because of British tourists going over there and kind of causing absolute ruckus, you know, just to kind of like warn you, look, hey, we don't want to call the police, but if we have to, we will. And if they if we do call them, it's not going to end the same way that it's going to end with, with us talking to you now, which is understandable, right? Cool. Safe. Then the other... Um, and I, it kind of made me think about like why didn't just London why didn't London just copy that um, template right why didn't London just copy that template and sort of like allow I don't know let's say, let's say let's not even say ten let's say three to five of the best clubs in London to have a twenty four hour license right or a license that extended up until six a.m. right which would be fucking amazing. And then what that would have done is that it would have stopped this thing that happens in Dawson, happens in Shoreditch, happens in probably in, Hack in Hackney too, especially if you hang around Hackney Wick, where because most of the clubs close out at the same time, you have this max, mass exodus happens around 1 to 2 a.m. where everyone's out in the streets causing a ruckus, trying to get an Uber, trying to find the next warehouse party, trying to pick up some scavengers so they can bang, whatever, I don't know, scoring drugs. Like all of the, like the whole entire world congregates on the street for about an hour to an hour and a half, right? And so everyone kind of disperses and goes their own, uh, their own separate ways. But I can imagine if you live in that kind of area, having that amount of noise occurring at one particular time must be super annoying, right? And it's going to get even worse when they bring it forward, right? Because people are not going to be as drunk as it would be at one or two. Because usually at one or two, people are already quite drunk anyway, especially if they've been out the whole entire day. And they usually just slip away home anyway after an hour and a half. But, you know, I'm, I'm assuming um, between the hours 11 and 12, people are going to be still quite active and shit. So having everyone out at the same time is probably not the best idea. And I guess the 25-hour license thing in Amsterdam works really well because as you might have noticed if you've been to places like Berlin... When you go to a club that's open 24 hours, it's really interesting to see the kind of changing flow into in the room overall. It kind of clears, it clears out, but never gets really, it never gets completely empty, but you can tell that space is open up and shit. Then it, it ramps up again. It, it kind of gets full again when a certain DJ comes on because people are coming to see someone play. Then it kind of s slows out again. But what you notice when you go out is that you're never with a group of people. You're always with like one or two. You're never with hordes, sorry, you're never with hordes of people. You're with groups of people. Whereas when you come out in London, especially if you go out in Dawson, Shoreditch or Hackney, you're always, especially if you, if, you walk, if you come out the same time everyone else does, you're always within like a horde of people like walking down the street. And that horde of people just, you know, there's never, never, there's never a good thing that comes out of hanging out or walking back home with a group of people. Like, someone's always going to get a bit of Dutch courage and get a bit leery and do something silly, jump on a bus shelter, say something to someone standing at a bus stop. That's just nonsense happens during that certain time, right? 
and it's never a good, it's never really a, it's never a good thing. I just don't I don't think it's a good thing. So I think sometimes having the twenty four hour um, ending time allows people to go out. At, you know, it kind of drip these people out like stag stagnant. It kind of staggers the kind of exit, so you never get that kind of mass hordes of people loitering around the streets. So as great as as much as I can understand the Hackney Council, the committee members or residents having their trepidations or having you know reservations behind giving clubs license to late licenses um being kind of like you know a bit more free with the late license giveaways it isn't going to end well when you have a whole horde of people just standing outside at 11 or 12 a.m or 12 p.m sorry and then um well oh and then basically that that um that question it got answered by this quote that i read in the art in the kind of um in the report that they writ up after the whole meeting took place and basically it says while drafting the policy a cost benefit analysis found hackney's nightlife left the council 1.5 million out of pocket each year through social and economic costs like cleaning and and borough level enforcement it also found in more food focused um areas like stoke newington there was a much less alcohol related crime than shoreditch so which is the main key takeaway here right is that Hackney Council are basically saying that as great as the nighttime economy has been for London overall, it's costing certain boroughs a lot more in terms of cleanup and law enforcement. Um, it's costing them a lot more monthly. It's, co it's costing them a lot more um, to clean up the streets and to make sure people are safe and shit. <clears throat> so they've always been left in a deficit. And they've realised that if they take more of a Stoke Newton approach in things, right, where there's not, I, I'm assuming apart from, what is, it, is it called the free compasses or something or the corner roundabout? I don't know. There's another pub as well. They're not really. There's no places open super late. Bar or bar is a club that's not really. That's open late sometimes, but for the most part, bars and clubs in Stoke Newton close behind around the hours of like one or two a.m. or sometimes a bit a bit earlier, and it's and it usually attracts a more older, mature clientele, right? So, basically, what the, what basically Acne Council is saying is that they want to position hackney to look more like or to <clears throat> or to look to copy more of the stoke newton point of view as opposed to the dawson shoreditch point of view which is understandable because if you've been to shoreditch on a friday or saturday night you know it's an absolute hellhole right um i, I think even us uh night time enthusiasts such as myself we can kind of confess that shoreditch is probably represents what can go what can go wrong when you kind of like um adopt this idea that the nighttime economy has only got its benefits and never hasn't got any negatives you know, um, the cleanup crew do an amazing job. Um, the cleaners and whatever do an amazing job to kind of make that place look uh, spick and span in the morning. But if you've been there between the hours of like 11 and 3, 3 a.m., you're just like, fucking hell, it's like World War Z. Do you know what I mean? Zombies everywhere. People absolutely smashed to the gills, which obviously isn't the fault of the bars or the whatever. It's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's something that kind of goes from the top, you know, this enforcement of making sure bars close at a certain time so that they're, you know, they're forced to run these drink promotions that get people hammered for cheap and then they get chucked out of one bar at 11 and then they only have three hours left to rave and they go to another bar and that bar needs to make more money so they let them in even though they're absolutely smashed and sh probably shouldn't be drinking more and then it's just a complete fuck up, right? Everyone's kind of fucking up. Everyone's kind of contributing to this whole like um, circle jerk of absolute diabolic behavior but I can understand the reservations that Hackney Council has that they don't want to follow suit and kind of follow the example of Shoreditch and kind of want to go more towards the idea of Stoke Newington but the only problem is that Stoke Newington by its very nature does attract a more a, a more mature quieter crowd and plus it's near schools and shit but for the most part Hackney Council Hackney in general there's it's it's, it's mainly a millennial borough there's, there's a lot of young people in the area loads and loads of young people it's gonna take a long while to kind of drive them out of that area and unfortunately if you've been, if you've lived in Hackney or you've been around Hackney Marshes, you'll know that um, the whole illegal warehouse party thing and field raves has, has ramped up um, up to an obscene level, um, especially this summer when the weather's been amazing. Like, there's, the, I don't think there's been a year where I've where I've seen that many forest raves happen week in week out, um, and they're and they're bloody incredible. They're organised really well. They're put they're put on by amazing promoters who kind of get really cool DJs to come along and we party and have a good time. It's fucking great. But they're illegal warehouse parties and they're illegal field raid parties. They don't have any security. There's no there's no real safety for the people that are there. They're in dilapidate areas of the borough you know what i mean it's just it's just everyone no one wins 
when you push people out of nightclubs and bars and then you uh, you tell them to kind of you know you kind of force them to put on these illegal warehouse parties or raves in order to kind of continue partying and it really is a bad state of affairs because you know if you've been to places such as berlin which i keep mentioning again and again and again but in berlin some of the biggest clubs in that city are kind of backed by the government, are tax exempt, some, some, even places like Bergheim, for example. So they have a way, they have a kind of rule where they kind of enforce their own kind of drug policy inside the club, right? So they have their own kind of dealers who they kind of vet and make sure they deal kind of safe drugs and whatever. It's kind of, it's not said, but it's sort of something that a lot of clubs do. And they kind of police their own. But then if you go in there and some idiot tries to sell some drugs in there, they'll kind of get you arrested and get you chucked out instantly, right? But they have their own kind of connections that make sure that place is safe so that you don't have any episodes or any uh, anything has happened as, you know, you don't have back-to-back deaths that Fabric had in their, in their regard, right? Fabric had fucking, you know, like sniffer dogs and metal detectors and like a million security guards walking in and out of the venue. Do you know what I mean? And they still have people dying in there, which, you know, is more of a sad and more of a bad indictment on the club as opposed to the dealers themselves, right? And also in general, like I mentioned in my other podcast, I just think overall, I think London and the UK in general has a real big problem with nightlife and drug culture in general. There's a real taboo behind it, which is the reason why we don't have this balance when it comes to these licensing laws. Because as a committee member, I think they just got too much power. You know, like having put in the licensing um, approval um, entirely in the hands or in the lap of the committee members gives them way too much power. And as you and as you might have known, as you might have experience yourself having dealt with anyone in the council um or anyone that's anyone in the council in general going into the council building to do with anything to do with uh, council tax whatever you know how much of a ball like or how much or how some sometimes the the rude characters you interact when you go into that building because they hold some level of power over you do you know what i mean they have this job that's you know fairly um um that's fairly, you know, run of the mill. But once you need something off of them, they kind of get a little bit power hungry, which is, again, it's not, it's not kind of a, it's not a slight on the person at all. It's just a part of human nature. Do you know what I mean, if you give someone power, you give them the kind of rule of law to, to, you know, to approve or disapprove of a night or of a party, or whatever, they're kind of going to get a little bit power mad. And I don't think that's a good thing either. And also I don't think it's a good thing to kind of like, you know, approve it everyone's license or give everyone a 25 license because some clubs are not responsible and some clubs don't take care of their patrons so there needs to be a balance but now it just seems that there is no balance at all and it seems like areas such as hackney which is thriving and the whole creative scene and the whole kind of nightlife culture and restaurant culture and art galleries and all that sort of malarkey is kind of the, part of the fabric and the dna of that area or of that of that borough has now kind of been you know they're just putting it to one side and saying you know what we're going to concentrate on just an older market who are you know fair enough the older market they want to concentrate on they want to make it more food focused and more probably family friendly but those people are going to get older after a while and then you know they're they're not going to they're not going to be they won't have they won't they won't be as um eager to spend the disposable income within that borough to keep the economy floating do you know what I mean so it's not a real it's not a great long-term strategy to kind of focus only on the older demographic um of your borough in general but again, I don't know what the answer is. I don't. Obviously, of course, the answer isn't you know abusing that um, Amy Lammy woman, uh, the night czar, who obviously people have now seen her limitations of her power, and she's also probably now seen the limitations of her own role, um, which has been quite funny to see. You know, she tweeted out the other day that it wasn't her responsibility to kind of get involved with something that has to be taken up with the borough and kind of you know snarkily put a link to some PDF um, backing up her point. And then after a backlash of uh, scores of backlash, she then tweets out again that oh, she's going to be calling for an urgent meeting with somebody. It's just like, Pfft. I don't get how someone from New Jersey is the bloody um, uh, nightmare in you have London. I don't think she goes out that much in general. I don't know. She doesn't look at someone that goes out or parties a lot or knows what's happening on the ground level of Hackney or ground level of London overall. Um, it's really strange that she's somebody that was part of the Labour Party in general. And I remember seeing the job for Knights are being advertised, right? But somehow she's the person that got that got hired. You know, I'm sure other people apply for the role, but she's the one that got hired anyway. It's just very, very strange. But again, the answer isn't abusing her because I don't think it's, it's something. To, it's not not. It's something that's way above her pay grade anyway. Regardless, it's something that has to be looked at um in terms of you know who you vote for in your local elections and i'm sure those i'm sure those committee members were voted in 
just this may got this may that's just passed right in the local election so that we probably have to look at our, we only have to look at ourselves in terms of how we probably fucked up and, and dropped the ball in terms of uh, not voting in members of the committee that would kind of like you know um help us with our own agenda but we are where we are at the moment i'm not sure what the answer is but bloody hell man what a strange time to live in hackney right when you're gonna be living in a place where bars and clubs are gonna close at 11 and 12 on a weekend it's just like fucking hell how boring can you get what can you do